Hello all, this is James Johnson, a.k.a. Software Blade, and I am here for, well, a non-game related video. Uh, we're, we're back a little bit to politics, we're back to actually a, a really serious topic, and, and one that's probably um, <clears throat> a bit more uh, of a Debbie Downer. It's a, well, more on the serious side, but I feel like it's an issue worth talking about, and I think it needs to be talked about. So, unless you've been living under a bubble, uh, or a rock, and I think that would make more sense, right? Unless you've been living under a rock, uh, you've heard about what has happened in New Zealand. And that was, you know, a, a terrible thing. But here we are in the age of social media. Uh, we live in the age of information being able to spread across the internet like wildfire. And is that a bad thing? I don't think it is. Um, I think if the internet was around in World War II, things probably would have turned out a tad bit differently for an entire population of, of people. I mean, it, it's not to say that that in current society with the internet that... Uh, genocide and stuff like that couldn't happen um, obviously there's been genocidal things that have happened uh, not that long ago um, yeah we can go back to Iraq and and look at the Kurdish people um, so the world will never be a perfect place but the internet is something of a tool that can help it uh, well can help all of the different various tribes scattered all throughout the, the, the world become a little closer to each other and see things from a slightly different viewpoint. Now, in this instance, we have a disillusioned tribe member going after... Uh, a Muslim community and this is you know it's it's not cool at the same time you know the members of of the Western tribe of the the Caucasian and, and Catholic Church or Christian Church have experienced similar things from the other uh, perspective so, and while these people aren't necessarily part of the wrongdoers that are part of their tribe, so I'm looking at this as a very broad term. We're, we're looking at this right now as Christian versus Muslim. And in the Christian tribe, there are some pretty evil people that have done some pretty crappy things. And, and here we are looking at another one. And then when we look at the Muslim tribe, we, we see equally crappy people uh, doing equally bad things in, in the name of their tribe. And, and the more, uh, I don't know, uh, not sure moderate is the right word, but the more maybe sane individuals of their tribe don't go about, you know, radicalizing themselves as much. You know, the, the normal... Uh, Catholics and Christians and and Western society people aren't running around behaving like this. This is you know appalling and and the normal Muslim isn't running around you know acting like Osama bin Laden, for instance. Uh, we we have to remember that there are fringe groups on. Um, on all sides and, and these aren't the only tribes there's all kinds of other tribes in the world you know uh, we've got Buddhists and we've got uh, people in South America um, you know 
Chinese, Japanese, uh, Southeast Asian. There's 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 so many various different people with different cultures and backgrounds and different ways of of looking at the world. And not always do all of these people get along. I mean, we still have conflicts between Pakistan and India. We still have conflicts all over Africa. I mean. Uh, the, our world is filled with conflict, and even even in the most um, civilized portions of our world, like for example, we we like to think that Western society is civilized, but yet we, on a daily basis, attack the right attacks the left, and the left attacks the right, and 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 we say some of the most ridiculous things about each other. And we're supposedly, you know, civilized. <clears throat> well, that's part of what I want to get into in this topic is why I think the biggest danger here that we're facing from my perspective in what's going on is the censorship. I don't understand why the left feels so inclined to hide the problem, to cover it up, to mask it, to make it disappear, to not let anyone see what has happened. Now, I'm not saying that that seeing videos from this tragedy is something I want to go out and see. But at the same time, I don't think it should be something that's being hidden either. If somebody is wanting to see what happened, don't they have a right to do so? Why, why does one side of the political spectrum, who has a very large amount of control over the fabric of social media have the ability to shut down the conversation in this type of regards. Right now the, the the world of YouTube is operating in a very strange capacity. Uh, my views have gone down dramatically in the last two days because people can't find my videos because I'm just a small YouTuber with a small amount of subs any views that I'm getting right now is from people that have already found me. They're, it's from my subscription base, right? But my ability to get new subs and have new people watch me right now is slim to none. Even though I'm putting out uh, new videos, uh, you know, two, three, four a day, they're not being found. And they're not being found because the search features from Google are disabled. They've been shut down because the ability to search uh, through the search filters of YouTube have been temporarily disabled because of the what happened in New Zealand. Evidently, people want to know about what happened in New Zealand, and so they want, they've been typing in stuff like New Zealand and filtering it by you know, today, or the last 48 hours, or this week, and, uh, yeah, YouTube just decided, well, we're just going to turn that functionality off for now, because we don't want people to see the, the carnage, the devastation, the, the brutality of of what's been done. And I don't quite understand that. Um, so now everyone on the on, on YouTube uh, platform and and other platforms, YouTube's not the only one affected, mind you. There's you know, subreddit has Reddit has actually banned things um, which is completely not with how Reddit usually operates. Reddit's usually one of the places where discourse is allowed to go on pretty much unchecked, but even Reddit has been uh, cracking the ban hammer on this situation. 
Uh, and, you know, there's so many other different platforms, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, there's a lot of different media sources these days that are uh, at the tips of our fingers via the Internet. But most of them all rest in Silicon Valley, and most all of them seem to be controlled by predominantly left-leaning uh, figures. And they seem to all agree that censorship of of this issue is better than is better than allowing the public to see the devastation. I don't know as if I agree. I think back to I think it was fifth grade or maybe fourth grade. I, I was pretty young when I remember uh, my teacher showing me images from the Holocaust. That was a pretty transformative experience. Um, and these were very these were very graphic images. Uh, and f being so young, um, you're very impressionable. <laughs> and you, you could imagine that, that those left quite an impression on our class, seeing these very graphical images of the Holocaust and being explained what the Holocaust was. Um, and I think that was a good thing. Um, we were, we as, as, as you know, uh, young impressionable minds, we were uh, inundated to the reality of the Holocaust. We weren't hidden from the reality of the Holocaust. And we left the classroom with definitely a lot more uh, knowledge and or respect and or thoughtfulness for the historical implications of what that entailed. So when I think back to that lesson, I think back to what I think is, well, not a bad thing to do. Certainly we could pick out and, fi well, how do you pick out? I suppose that therein lies the question is uh, if, if you start uploading uh, some of the, the horriblest or the, the, the unedited versions of this shooting and posting it on Facebook, which is evidently why the filters have come down and have stopped working, um, now people can watch those. Why not? Why shouldn't people watch those? Uh, what is what is the problem with people seeing the videos? And this is this is a serious question. Why do we need this censorship? Ultimately, what the censorship does is it makes people have to go somewhere else. It makes people have to find the information in another way and that way may be less reliable or it could be less um, less in the public so one of the great things about social media is that we can have this conversation in the public and people can weigh in from various sides and while this could obviously end up in some heated uh, conversation from various ways of looking at the situation that's needed to keep the situation tempered when you censor a topic like this 
you force people to well almost how do I put this um, they end up seeking out others who are like-minded and when you seek out others that are like-minded you end up in I hate to use an overused term these days but an echo chamber and when you're in an echo chamber you get uh, how you feel um, uh, reinforced and when it's reinforced over and over again because everybody that you talk to completely agrees with you you start to think that uh, your position in life and your your uh, way of looking at at life is the the correct way and is there a correct way no but when you start to think that there's a correct way because there is not an open discussion from various different viewpoints to countermand that type of thought process, then you have echo chambers. And these echo chambers, well, they rile each other up. And so by, by censoring the conversation, you cause people to have to migrate to individuals who are similar to them or maybe worse than them from an extreme point of view. And so everyone ends up a little more extreme when they migrate into their echo chamber. And what I mean by that, I guess, is um, I don't want to disparage some of the new platforms like, for example, BitChute. Um, BitChute is is like YouTube, right? But BitChute is a place where there's less rules than YouTube. And so you have a bit more of... Uh, you have a, a bit more crazy videos there that are a little more on the unhinged side. Well, when you censor new, this New Zealand issue, you push more people to that site and that's more people falling in with the quote unquote extreme people is that necessarily what we want the internet to do do we want the internet to become bastions of of little places of, of clicks, right? Bastions of clicks where everybody has the same opinion on their on their platform. And so then you can have a, a left leaning platform and you can have a right leaning platform and everyone likes each other over there and everyone likes each other over there, but in between they just hate each other. And, and they rile each other up more and more and more and more. That's not good. That's not how the conversation should go in the real world. And why am I... I feel like one of the only sane people left... I know that's not true. I know there's lots of sane people that are still left in this world, but we keep hearing from the echo chambers on the far right and the far left all the time. Um, and it makes you wonder, it, it, it makes, if you're a moderate person, it, it almost makes you feel like you're kind of alone in the world like uh <clears throat> everybody's radical and and you being somewhere in the middle is is just strange right take your side already grab your gun the the war is brewing stop stop trying to play peacemaker just start shooting and uh yeah that's 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 how society feels like. It, it feels like we're in the middle of this huge culture war. And to be honest, we are. We are in the middle of this huge culture war. 
and I think to an extent we've always been in the middle of a culture war, but the internet has just made it easier for that culture war to be fought. Uh, the internet allows for ideas to happen at you know near instantaneous speeds, and so this culture war is 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 at our fingertips much faster, and we can rally behind our sides much faster. And that might not necessarily be a bad thing because maybe the culture war has to be fought. Maybe we do have to finally come to some set of of terms, some set of logical rules that work between the right and the left, some middle ground, instead of falling farther and farther and farther apart. I will tell you right now that continuing to censor every travesty that happens in the world is not a good idea for the left. While it might make your platforms uh, feel safer or feel uh, um, uh, more in line with your glass bubble and the narrative you want, you know, if you don't want to look at these videos, don't look. Um, but in doing so, you alienate people people end up migrating to places where where information can freely be transmitted. And that's what censorship does. And censorship is not necessary it, well censorship is never good. It, it is never good. There there is no good reason for censorship. Anyone who uses censorship who does censorship, I, I don't doubt that they don't have the best interests in heart, but ultimately it's a misguided principle that they're operating on. Um, I served in the U.S. Navy. I've, I've took part in the Gulf Wars. I've seen some pretty horrible stuff. Uh, and I will tell you that there is there's a difference between seeing horrible stuff in an image and seeing it firsthand in real life. Nobody wants to see horrible stuff unless Nobody. People are curious, right? Um, so it's it's obvious that there are there are going to be some people who are curious about seeing some horrible stuff, but when they see it, I think that's an image that they need to see. If they're curious enough to want to look, then they should take a look and live with the images that they end up seeing. And images are never, ever as graphically intense as being there in person. I mean, if, you know, there's a lot of good photos in this world, but it never quite, it never quite gets it all down. The, the smell, the the other senses, the the sound, the silence, the 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 warmth, the anger, the it's just something that it, yeah an image doesn't quite portray the hate the way being there in person does. And so I think even from yeah, what am I trying to say here? The people that believe that seeing these images will cause will cause further 
domino effect of hatred, I say you're wrong. I, I, I think that these images will do the opposite. If they want to see the, the worst images in the world, let them see the worst images in the world. Because it's a tool. Um, and it's a tool that can be used for good, not just for bad. Uh, censorship is is unfortunately a tool that can only be used for bad. Censorship never has a good outcome. And that is ultimately the message of this video I'm ultimately trying to get through, is this, this situation in New Zealand is, is horrific. It's, it's sad, and it's a sad day for humanity. And it's not going to be the only sad day for humanity. I wish that weren't true. But we're going to see other situations like this. Um, whether or not we we hide uh, we hide the images, the videos, the the news about this topic from the population, or we don't, it's not going to change whether or not this continues to perpetuate. It's only going to keep people from being able to have a credible conversation in an environment where there's more than one side to the story and people can come to some sort of a moderate, level-headed um, conclusion to the reality. If you censor it, you'll never have that conversation. And so that is is ultimately the point I'm trying to make in this video is we shouldn't be censoring the the worst parts of humanity. We should let everyone see the worst parts of humanity so that everyone can know what the worst parts of us are. Because we can't truly make ourselves better unless we see ourselves at our worst. And so stop the censorship. Let the internet be the place it's supposed to be, which is a place where information can be exchanged freely, images can be exchanged freely, ideas can be exchanged freely from all sides of the spectrum, the coin, the culture, and where it can become a melting pot to eventually bring this world together. Anyway, I'm James Johnson. This has been a, a pretty deep video. Hopefully you appreciate it. So leave a like. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if, you, if you're liking my content. And until next time, peace.